Welcome to worship at Westminster Presbyterian Church in Santa Fe. Our congregation was established in 1893 as the Spanish-speaking Presbyterian Church in Santa Fe, and we continue to honor our language tradition by worshiping bilingually. If you need translations from Spanish to English, you can find them in the bulletin located in the description box below this video. On April 4th, Easter Sunday, we will receive the One Great Hour of Sharing offering. Join with Presbyterians worldwide in sharing God's love with our neighbors in need around the world by providing relief from natural disasters, food for the hungry, and support for the poor and the oppressed. Thank you for your heartfelt gift. One Great Hour of Sharing currently supports projects in over 100 countries. You can give by mailing a check made out to Westminster with One Great Hour of Sharing in the memo line. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday and begins Holy Week. We will celebrate Palm Sunday with our siblings across the Presbytery via YouTube at 10 a.m. Westminster will offer our own Monday Thursday service on YouTube. We will join again with the Presbytery to celebrate Good Friday. And we will celebrate the resurrection on Easter Sunday on YouTube on our own channel at 11 a.m. And I encourage you to celebrate with the Presbytery at 10. During this time of COVID, the church building is closed, but we continue to be the church, worshiping online together. Bienvenidos a la Iglesia de Westminster en Santa Fe. Nuestra congregación se estableció en 1893 como la Iglesia Presbiteriana Hispano Hablante en Santa Fe y continuamos ahorrando bilingües. Si necesita traducciones del inglés al español, Puede encontrarlas en el boletín ubicado en el cuadro de descripción debajo de este video. El 4 de abril, la Pascua, recibiremos la ofrenda una gran hora para compartir. Únase a los presbiterianos de todo el mundo para compartir el amor de Dios con nuestros vecinos necesitados de todo el mundo al brindar alivio en caso de desastres naturales alimentos para los hambrientos y apoyo a los pobres y oprimidos. Gracias a su sincero regalo, una gran hora para compartir actualmente apoya proyectos en más de, de 100 países. Puede donar enviado un cheque al nombre de Westminster con One Great Hour of Sharing en la línea de memo. Gracias por tu generosidad. El próximo domingo es el domingo de Ramos y comienza la Semana Santa. Celebraremos el Domingo de Ramos con nuestro presbiterio en YouTube a las 10 en la mañana. Westminster ofrecerá nuestro propio servicio de Jueves Santo en YouTube. Nos uni uniremos nuevamente al presbiterio para celebrar el Viernes Santo. Celebraremos la Resurrección el Domingo de Pascua en este canal de YouTube a las 11 en la mañana. El Domingo de Pascua y les invito a celebrar el Domingo de Pascua también con el presbiterio a las 10 en la mañana. Durante este tiempo de COVID, el edificio de la iglesia está cerrado, pero seguimos siendo la iglesia, adorando a Dios juntos en línea. Este es el día que hizo el Señor. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our call to worship this morning comes from the poet Jan Richardson. This poem is titled, Blessing the Seed. I should tell you at the outset, this blessing will require you to do some work. First, you must simply let this blessing fall from your hand as if it were a small thing. You could easily let slip through your fingers as if it were not most precious to you as if your life did not depend on it. Next, you must trust that this blessing knows where it is going, that it understands the ways of the dark, that it is wise to seasons and to times. Then, and I know this blessing has already asked much of you, it is to be hoped that you will rest and learn that something is at work when all seems still, seems dormant, seems dead. I promise you, 
This blessing has not abandoned you. I promise you this blessing is on its way back to you. I promise you, when you are least expecting it, when you have given up your last hope, this blessing will rise green and whole and new. Let us worship God. together to confess our brokenness. We have been called to be God's own people, and so in trust we confront and confess and repent of the ways we wound our lives and the lives of others. I invite you to read with me the unison prayer of confession as it appears on your screen. Let us pray together. God, you created and called what you had made good. Yet too often we see no good in your creation, in ourselves, in others, in the world around us. Too often we act in ways that contribute to death and destruction, not life and abundance. We are content to live alongside so many wrongs in the world if only us and ours are left alone. God, forgive our refusal to welcome the world you so love. Help us to see all which you created as an us and not a them. Give us the energy and courage to work toward the righting of ancient and new wrongs that your whole creation might flourish. Amen. We confess our brokenness knowing God hears all the words we say, spoken and unspoken, and loves us nevertheless. Amados de Dios, levantan la cabeza y el corazón, y sepan esto. En Jesucristo somos perdonados. Gracias a Dios. Amén. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, and prepare our hearts to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, that, hearing, we may also obey your will. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. En español, derrama tu Espíritu Santo, oh Dios, y prepara nuestros corazones para aceptar tu palabra. Silencia en nosotros cualquier voz que no sea la tuya, para que, oyendo, también obedezcamos tu voluntad. A través de Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amen. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 12. Listen for God's word to us. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the air, earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it, and they said it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was going to die. En español, la lectura bíblica se encuentra en Juan, capítulo 12. Entre la gente que había ido a Jerusalén a adorar durante la fiesta, había algunos griegos. Estos se acercaron a Felipe, que era de Bethsaida, un pueblo de Galilea, y le rogaron, Señor, queremos ver a Jesús. Felipe se Felipe fue y se lo dijo a Andrés, y los dos fueron a contárselo a Jesús. Jesús les dijo entonces, Ha llegado la hora en que el Hijo del Hombre va a ser glorificado. Les aseguró que si el grano de trigo al caer en la tierra no muere, queda el solo. Pero si muere, de abundante cosecha. El que ama su vida la perderá, pero el que desprecia su vida en este mundo la conservará para la vida eterna. Si alguno quiere servirme, que me siga, y donde yo esté, allí estará también el que me sirva. Si alguno me sirve, mi Padre lo honrará. Siento en este momento un, una angustia terrible. ¿Y qué voy a decir? Diré, Padre, líbrame de este, esta angustia. Pero precisamente para esto he venido. Padre, glorifica tu nombre. Entonces se oyó una voz del cielo que decía, Ya lo he glorificado y lo voy a glorificar otra vez. La gente que estaba ahí escuchando decía que había sido un trueno. Pero algunos afirmaban, un ángel le ha hablado. Jesús les dijo, no fue por mí por quien se oyó esta voz, sino por ustedes. Este es el momento en que el mundo va a ser juzgado. Y ahora será, será exposado el que manda en este mundo. Pero cuando yo se he levantado de la tierra, atraeré a todos a mí mismo. Con esto daba a entender de qué forma había de morir. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This set of teachings from the Gospel of John are actually a jump ahead in the story we tell each year through Lent. This particular passage takes place in the space between Jesus's entry into Jerusalem and his arrest. Reverend T. Denise Anderson pointed out that Jerusalem would have been full of tension that week, balancing on the knife's edge between uprising and violent suppression, and drew a comparison to 2020, a year of pestilence, pressure, and protest. Last spring, when George Floyd was killed by a member of the Minneapolis Police Department while other officers stood by, tensions that had long been simmering exploded. Fire and destruction spread. People gathered in the hundreds and the thousands to march and demonstrate and protest the police department and the judicial system, and indeed an entire way of life that wields its power against minoritized communities in unjust and horrific ways. The National Guard was deployed. Concrete barriers sprang up, threaded with concertina wire. The city went into lockdown, a lockdown most heavily enforced in minority neighborhoods. Citizens, civilians, were shot with rubber bullets and exposed to tear gas. A journalist lost an eye. Military, military helicopters circled overhead. At work, a neighbor came in to recommend we board up our windows and offered his services as an armed guard. We declined. But I would wake up in the mornings and take my dog for a walk and the air smelled like smoke and gunpowder. I will never, ever forget it. And now, 10 months later, the man who killed George Floyd and the men who stood by and let it happen are on trial. And my hometown is again full of concrete barriers and concertina wire. The National Guard has been deployed. And ironically, the Minneapolis Police Department is involved with keeping the peace. Minneapolis, like far too many cities across our country, is a pressure cooker of racial tension, of white supremacist systems, and the people who demand better. Police departments charged with keeping the peace, when keeping the peace really means keeping the status quo, never mind the damages the status quo brings. What does revolution look like? What does reformation look like? And what comes after? This is one of the hardest and most complicated things about our reformed tradition. Iglesia reformada semper reformanda, the church reformed and always being reformed by the Holy Spirit. And it's in our DNA as Christians. The old life has gone, we proclaim. A new life has begun. And this is the promise of our gospel text today. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Change, any change, requires the death of the old so that something new can take its place. 
And this is what Jesus is reminding his disciples of in a week of unrest, days before he would go to his own death. What didn't you do to bury me, but you forgot that I am a seed? From a poem by Greek poet Dinos Christianopoulos became a motif in the protest that erupted following the Ayotzinapa 43, the 43 students who were disappeared in Iguala, Mexico in 2013 transformed slightly into they tried to bury us but they didn't know we were seeds. These words have been, been seen on protest signs the world over. It calls on the idea that those who have suffered can help bring about justice, bear the fruit, if you will. It walks the line between valorizing suffering and discarding it this seed metaphor claims that in the face of suffering, new life will arise. And of course, that seeds bloom in the face of adversity is a biological fact. They fall in the autumn, spend the winter buried in the frozen earth, only to sprout in spring. Death Valley and so many other deserts like it have hundred year blooms where seeds that have fallen and lain dormant for decades finally get enough water to sprout. Environments with regular wildfires have plants whose seeds require a fire to germinate. Where it seems like nothing can grow, life will find a way. Seeds have long been a metaphor for incipient change beyond poetry and protest signs. A seed was planted, a biographer might write, to indicate a shift in the course of someone's life. I'm just trying to plant a seed, someone might say, when they engage with someone they disagree with. This blessing, this seed, will require you to do some work, Jan Richardson wrote. First, you must simply let this blessing fall from your hand. Next, you must trust that this blessing knows where it is going. Then, and I know this blessing has already asked much of you, it is to be hoped that you will rest and learn that something is at work when all seems still, seems dormant, seems dead. I promise you, when you are least expecting it, when you have given up your last hope, this blessing, this seed, will rise green and whole and new. Death is an ending. But it is not the end. Which brings us back to Minneapolis and George Floyd. To be very, very clear, there is no hope to be found in the death of a human being, no hope to be found in the trauma of witnessing that death, and no hope to be found in the video of a black man's killing going viral. And yet, that very hopelessness has led to something new. It has stirred up good trouble. It planted a seed, or perhaps it watered the ground where a seed was already planted. Centuries of policies and systems and institutions have tried to make that seed fall on rock have tried to kill that seed, but it is a seed. And you can freeze a seed, and it will still grow. You can burn a seed, and it will still grow. You can bury a seed, and it will still grow. You can give a seed only the tiniest scrap of earth, 
and it will still grow. And so things are changing in Minneapolis, and they are changing in cities around the country, even around the world. The seed planted in the outrage and despair when George Floyd was killed has grown, and it is slowly beginning to bear fruit. George Floyd did not need to die, and his death remains an atrocity and an injustice, no matter the results of the trial. But the way so many white Minneapolitans, myself included, understood our city, understood our lives, understood our police department, all of that had to die so that the city could change. And the death of those systems and ideologies looks a lot like civil unrest, like protesting in the streets, like fires burning in the night, like broken windows. And it looks like armed forces marching down residential streets, like tear gas and rubber bullets, like lives destroyed by an unjust system. Jesus enters into Jerusalem, knowing what is to come. His disciples, his followers, his community, they have no idea. Their imaginings are more immediate. The king has come and he will overthrow the Romans and restore David's kingdom. Jesus' death on the cross means that by his community's standards, he's failed. And to be honest, even after his death and resurrection, Jesus' people, the ones who raised him and formed the backbone of his faith, they continued to be oppressed. And those who followed Jesus, they too did not find immediate new life. Yet faith and the trust in that promise of new life of death that does not have the last word, these kept communities going and growing. This belief that out of death comes new life, it resonated. 1,500 years later, the reformers would find refuge in that belief. And now in our modern times, we too understand that change means both death and new life. And as Christians, we proclaim very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Change is hard. We know this. Reverend Anderson notes, we can die to something so that we can live to others, or we can hold on to what is and die with it. Only one of these is a faithful way forward. I should tell you at the outset, this blessing will require you to do some work. But I promise you, when you are least expecting it, when you have given up your last hope, this blessing will rise green and whole and new. Thanks be to God. Amen.
we are, all that we have is a gift from God. I invite you to take a moment at this time to prepare your offering for this community. Get it ready, write your check, pop it in an envelope so you can put it in the mail tomorrow. On Easter Sunday, we will receive the one great hour of sharing special offering, which supports communities in need here in Santa Fe, in New Mexico, in the United States, and around the world. If you would like to make a gift to that offering, please mail your check to the church with one great hour of sharing in the memo line. Let us pray. God, receive these gifts of the people of God given because we are your people called to serve one another. We give thanks to you for these gifts which we have received and offer thanksgiving because we have more than enough and so we can give out of our abundance. Bless these gifts and our lives that they and we might be a blessing to others. Amen. I invite you now to gather your communion elements so that you may also partake in this feast. Beloved, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from east and from south and from west and from north to sit at table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table, and our Savior invites all who love him to come and eat and be filled at this table which he has prepared. El Señor sea con ustedes y también contigo. Eleven sus corazones, los elevamos al Señor. Demos gracias a nuestro Dios. Es digno y justo darle gracias y alabanzas. Dios Todopoderoso, en todo tiempo y en todo lugar, es verdaderamente digno y justo darte gracias. Te damos gracias por el regalo de la creación y especialmente por el don de nuestra vida. Te damos gracias por habernos hecho a tu imagen y por perdonarnos cuando actuamos como si no tuvieses autoridad sobre nuestras vidas. Te damos gracias por sostenernos en tu inmenso amor. Y así con todo tu pueblo, con ángeles, arcángeles y con toda la compañía del cielo, alabamos y magnificamos tu glorioso nombre, uniendo nuestras voces en el himno eterno. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Santo eres tú y bendito es tu Hijo Jesucristo que nació de María y participó de las alegrías y tristezas de la vida tal como los conocemos. Ungiste a Jesucristo con tu espíritu para predicar buenas nuevas a quien vive en pobreza, para sanar a quienes tienen corazones quebrantados, para proclamar libertad a quienes están cautivos, para dar vista a quienes están ciegos, y para liberar a quienes son oprimidos, proclamando el año agradable del Señor. En tu bautismo, sufrimiento, muerte y resurrección, diste vida a tu iglesia e hiciste un nuevo pacto con tu pueblo en el agua, en el espíritu. Damos gracias porque en la noche antes de morir, el Señor tomó en sus manos el pan, y después de haber dado gracias, lo partió y dijo, Esto es mi cuerpo dado por ustedes. Hagan esto en memoria de mí. Así también después de la cena tomó la copa y dijo, Esta copa es el nuevo pacto confirmado en mi sangre. Cada vez que beban, háganlo en memoria de mí. De esta manera proclamamos la muerte del Señor hasta que Él vuelva. Al recordar la gracia de tu Hijo Jesucristo, tomamos este pan y este vino de la creación, y con alegría celebramos su muerte y resurrección, esperando el día de su avenida y proclamando el misterio de la fe. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. 
derrama tu Espíritu Santo sobre tu pueblo y sobre estos sus dones de pan y vino, para que el pan que partimos y la copa que bendecimos sean el cuerpo y la sangre de Cristo en nuestras vidas. Haznos uno con Cristo, uno con nuestro prójimo, y uno en servicio a todo el mundo. Por Cristo, con Cristo, en Cristo, en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, a ti sean dados todo honor y gloria, Dios omnipotente, desde ahora y para siempre. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Padre nuestro que estás en los cielos, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga tu reino. Hágase tu voluntad como en el cielo, así también en la tierra. El pan nuestro de cada día, danoslo hoy. Y perdonanos nuestros deudas como también perdonamos a nuestros deudores. Y no nos deje caer en tentación, mas líbranos del mal. Porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria por todos los siglos. Amén. Because there is one loaf, we, many as we are, are one body, for it is one loaf of which we partake. When we break the bread, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? When we give thanks over the cup, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, the feast is prepared. Let us pray. God, we give thanks that you have invited us to your table. We give thanks that you have received us as members of the body of Christ and have affirmed us as a community of faith. Lead us to live as faithful and dedicated disciples in service to all the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. From Jan Richardson. I should tell you 
at the outset, this blessing will require you to do some work. First, you must simply let this blessing fall from your hand, as if it were a small thing you could easily let slip through your fingers, as if it were not most precious to you, as if your life did not depend on it. Next, you must trust that this blessing knows where it is going, that it understands the ways of the dark, that it is wise to seasons and to times. Then, and I know this blessing has already asked much of you, it is to be hoped that you will rest and learn that something is at work when all seems still, seems dormant, seems dead. I promise you, this blessing has not abandoned you. I promise you, this blessing is on its way back to you. I promise you, when you are least expecting it, when you have given up your last hope, this blessing will rise, green and whole and new. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you this day and forevermore. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. I invite you now to greet one another with a sign of peace, either in the chat box right here or by sending a text message or giving a phone call. Let your friends and neighbors and loved ones know that you are thinking of them.